Good morning, good afternoon, good night, uh, uh, wherever uh, you might be. Uh, great pleasure to be here with you uh, uh, today. Uh, my name is uh, Tem Rapponen. Uh, I work uh, as the general manager of My Data Global uh, and, and here to talk to you about uh, our personal data, my data, a human centric approach to personal data. Now, let's see, let me get my screen shared to you and we will be good to go. My apologies. There we go. Now, uh, just a little bit of backdrop first about myself and uh, uh, about the content here. So uh, uh, again, very excited to be here. Uh, uh, OE Global is not uh, familiar to me uh, or, or us from before. Uh, we had a chance to, to engage some months ago. And uh, uh, after that, I was invited to give a talk and it's absolutely fabulous to, to uh, um, um, have a chance to connect the personal data community with the with the open education community. There is a lot indeed to talk about. Um, my background is uh, uh, a lot in, in, in open democracy and open data, uh, in startups, in innovations. Uh, in the last uh, 20 years, um, originally uh, from, uh, from an IT, IT background, um, uh, and for the last couple of years have been working with the topic of, of, of personal data. Uh, and some of you will remember uh, Tim Berners-Lee, uh, the inventor of the web, uh, a couple of years ago um, had this uh, uh, um, message of three things that are wrong uh, with the web um, at the moment. Uh, one of them being, being the misuse uh, of personal data. Uh, the other ones, uh, other ones that he, he, he uh, outlined then was uh, uh, the proliferation of fake news uh, and issues with political advertising. So most certainly all those three are very, very um, uh, uh, relevant in the world, world of today. Uh, um, today we will focus uh, um, on the personal data aspect of that. Uh, and in particular, of course, relating to skills, uh, learning, education, and work. And you see here on my slide uh, uh, the My Data logo, uh, and already that tells the story. Uh, already this time of the day, regardless of how many hours you've been uh, uh, awake, uh, enormous amounts of personal data will have been gathered about you. It will have been gathered maybe about your learning. Yes, that's the ABC sector there. Maybe public transport, your energy, your self-measurement, your uh, 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 shopping, your IoT devices, your, 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 your uh, 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 apps and, uh, uh, that you use in your daily life. Uh, and it's a matter of, well, how can we uh, control that data? Uh, how can we uh, use that data for good? That's, that's the essence, essence of what we are talking about here today. So my data, a human-centric approach to personal data management. So my data is both an alternative vision uh, as well as a set of guiding principles, how we as individuals can and should have control and should have agency over the data trails that we leave behind us in our daily lives. Uh, kind of a big, uh, big thought uh, uh, in some way, yes. Uh, and another note, uh, uh, maybe, maybe quite uh, simple in principle. Uh, um, of course, we realize quite, uh, quite tricky to, uh, to do in practice. So, Let's uh, think about what that might mean. Let's imagine that firstly, we could use personal data from wherever it is uh, in a way that makes our everyday life easier and better. Let's 
assume that we can be ourselves uh, powerful actors together with others, our choices that we do online and with our data matter. And thirdly, let's assume that we, we can trust that our personal data is used by used ethically by the different actors uh, uh, collecting and using that data. That's the type of world that I and we want to live in. What would that mean? So the vision is a fair, sustainable and prosperous digital society, uh, which is uh, uh, enabled through a human centric approach to personal data. And in this digital society, people as individuals, people as collectives uh, uh, get value from their personal data, but they also set agenda on, on how that personal data is used. And for organizations, the ethical use of data is always the most attractive option. And we're not talking here just about uh, data uh, uh, collected in terms of advertising or cookies or so on, but rather about all the data that's in the databases in the registries uh, uh, of the services that we use. So, to make this vision happen, we see that there are three fundamental shifts that need to happen. Uh, and these shifts were outlined in what's called the My Data Declaration that was written about three years ago. Uh, so we talk about the shift from formal to actionable rights. We talk about the shift from data protection to data empowerment. And we talk about the shift from closed to open ecosystems. Big fundamental shifts. And I'll just explain those a little bit before we later get then to what that means in the, in, in, in the scope of, of uh, uh, skills data. Uh, so first of all, uh, Many of the data protection laws which have existed uh, or have recently uh, uh, been, been uh, uh, put in place, the GDPR uh, and many of the other uh, countries have put, put and given great rights to individuals regarding their personal data. But in many ways, those rights are still formal. Uh, and, and what we mean by that is that to exercise those rights is not easy, it's not straightforward, and it certainly is not real time, most of the time. So we need to move from friction to action by making exercising these legal rights simple and easy. We talk about also one-click rights. With one click, I should be able to be forgotten or to be able to download my data, to give or revoke consent, to transfer my data from one place to another, and so on, from formal to actionable rights. The other and the second shift is a, is a kind of a mindset shift. Uh, so we often talk about individuals people who need to be protected. Uh, and that's great, um, but that's not enough. Uh, so we need to move from this mindset of kind of fear and protection uh, to giving people confidence. Uh, we want to see uh, and, and, and know that sharing of personal data can also be good for you. It can empower us to do uh, great things if we can combine uh, data from multiple sources uh, uh, into one whole, uh, or if we can uh, um, enable the flow of data from, from, from one service to another. So we don't want to just protect data and protect people, but rather uh, to empower people to act with their data. 
Uh, and then thirdly, the third uh, big shift is from closed to open ecosystems. Uh, so what we have uh, right now, uh, as I think we, 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 we can relatively well agree, uh, is a set of tech monopolies. And unfortunately, those monopolies tend to get only stronger with time. We need to get uh, to a place where we have a freedom of choice uh, among good alternatives through openness that we can truly decide what are the services we use. Those services should be interoperable. And in fact, this openness uh, um, can create both uh, competition. Uh, so from the, from the point of the markets, it's a more functioning market, but then also um, on top of the big players or the dominant players uh, uh, or next to them, uh, um, I should say, um, smaller, more specialized organizations and services can, can uh, uh, um, exist uh, and come up. So these are the three, three fundamental shifts that were outlined in the My Data Declaration. Now, those shifts uh, uh, alone are, are, are not enough. Uh, uh, there are these kind of infrastructural uh, thinking, what kind of roles are there, uh, and then what kind of principles need to be implemented to make this happen. Uh, I'll not get into the details of these now. Uh, uh, we can get to the, get to them later if uh, if uh, need need be. But firstly, uh, individuals having control um, of their data, uh, not data being being uh, controlled and uh, uh, passed in uh, behind their back. Uh, secondly, the individual as the point of integration, not the organizations themselves. It should be easy for the individual to be, be the one knowing uh, and controlling uh, the flows of personal data. Uh, again, people should be empowered uh, to give consent, to revoke consent, uh, to use that data that's collected about them. Uh, portability, uh, the new right, the Article 20 of GDPR, uh, which means that, that we should be able to uh, uh, transport data from one service to another for access and reuse. We should have the transparency over how our data is used. Even when, when, when data is uh, used in a way, in a legal way, uh, for example, let's say if you are applying for a job as a, as a teacher or, or such, uh, uh, maybe your criminal record needs to be checked. Uh, uh, it's not a matter of consent, but you, you should still transparently be able to see uh, um, that that data is used and how that data is, is, is used. And finally, this interoperability uh, between services, it really should not matter uh, um, what services uh, you use, uh, the data should be interoperable and the services should be interoperable. And, and now, of course, some, some will say that, okay, great, what you are talking about is building uh, a whole bunch of application programming interfaces, APIs. Uh, yes, uh, we want the personal data to be used through APIs, uh, but that will result in a, uh, uh, quite a mess uh, that's difficult to navigate um, from the point of the of the end user. Now, the other world that we are we are seeing is uh, control and access to to services uh, being controlled through uh, a few platforms, few IDs. Uh, uh, that is not a, a well functional model either. Rather, we want people themselves to be the center point, uh, the point of integration. Uh, and, and we want to have these data intermediaries or my data operators, as we call them, be the kind of central uh, tool, central points where people control their personal data.
Another way to put it, uh, uh, just as, uh, as in, in terms of quadrants, um, what the my data thinking is after comparing with uh, GDPR uh, and the data protection laws, um, as well as the work of, of uh, especially the tech monopolies and giants, is the combination of having strong data protection, which the GDPR gives, uh, but combining that with lots of data usage. And by the way, here, when I say that uh, uh, Google, Facebook, Alibaba, Amazon, and others have weak data protection and lots of data usage, uh, I'm sure they would argue that they actually have strong uh, data protection. Why we say that they don't is that in, in effectively people uh, do not understand uh, how their personal data is used. If effectively, it is it's possible, but difficult to control how, how their data is used. Thus, it's uh, uh, difficult to say, cannot be said that it's really people deciding how that data is used. Okay, it's a little bit a uh, 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 provocation. I will, I will uh, admit that. Now there was a mention of open data in the title, uh, and I mentioned uh, also open data uh, uh, as as one of the things that that uh, I have been working on in the past. Uh, and we should note that when we talk about personal data, personal data is is uh, by definition different from open data, but there are a lot of similarities here. Uh, and in fact, the roots of the My Data movement are very much uh, um, building on top of Open Knowledge uh, Foundation and the whole Open Data movement. So, similar, uh, if, if we look at Open Data, the core freedoms under under Open Data, or the core core ideas, is that anyone can use the data sets like budgets, like uh, uh, maps, like uh, 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 statistics, uh, and so on. Anyone can build on those, make mashups, uh, um, utilize those for, for whatever purposes uh, uh, they want. Uh, and anyone uh, can freely share the outcome of this work. Uh, so similarly, uh, my data, uh, or in a world where we, we, we uh, live by the my data principles, it would mean that the uh, freedom for the individual is there uh, to use that data outside of the original context. The individual has the freedom to, to use that data, build on it, mash up uh, um, data from multiple sources. Uh, and has then the freedom to share that data further uh, um, to other services or to other, other uh, uh, people, other uh, places for their personal benefit or for altruistic uh, reasons, for example, for, for research purposes. So there are a lot of similarities, but still a clear distinction between my data and open data. And of course, this, uh, uh, this shift and this mindset, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, transformation is difficult. Uh, we talk about the bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich, the BLT sandwich, uh, to remind ourselves of the different perspectives. Uh, we talk about data, it's not a tech thing only. We talk about data protection, data rights, those are not just legal uh, uh, issues, um, but there also needs to be uh, business models uh, uh, or incentive models th that work for the different uh, uh, types of parties and for people. Uh, and of course, there's the, the whole societal view, uh, what's the world we want to live in and the policies that direct, direct uh, um, us toward that vision? Is it more of a, a state controlled? Uh, is it more uh, uh, corporation controlled? Um, or is it uh, human controlled? So, so this was an introduction to uh, 
uh, uh, to my data. Um, and, and before I get to skills data, I want to say a few words about what's happening in the in the kind of uh, uh, what's happened along the way and what kind of uh, kind of uh, political and governmental um, adoption there is at the moment. So the idea of using personal data. Uh, it's not unique to, to us and the My Data community uh, per se. Uh, people have been thinking about this for years and years. Um, but in 2012, uh, in, in Finland, in Helsinki, we had the Open Knowledge, uh, open knowledge event with over 1,000 people there. And uh, that was focusing on open data, which, uh, which was very starting to get really big um, at the time. Uh, and at that time, there was uh, uh, one session about, well, what do these open data movements, what might they mean for, for personal data? And uh, that's where we consider the roots of this, this uh, My Data community. Uh, in the last few years, we've uh, uh, been able to grow the community and work with governments. Uh, so firstly, we worked with the government of Finland uh, back in 2014, uh, to build uh, to do a white paper uh, uh, of what this uh, what this uh, um, approach would mean in, in this context, uh, and after we did it uh, in English in 2015, people from the European Commission, uh, number of companies working in the space, a number of universities got quite interested in it. Uh, we were able to get uh, this my data thinking into the Finnish uh, government program. Uh, which was uh, uh, great um, and, and, and has accelerated uh, the development. And then coming from the open data community and learning from the open data community, uh, we've started building uh, and curating international conferences uh, since 2016 uh, to bring people from these different disciplines uh, together uh, and bridging different communities. Uh, like I said, there, there have been multiple commu smaller communities working on the topic, uh, um, many not knowing about e each other and the other communities. And we're very much trying to build bridges between these communities. Uh, data issues and data sharing as a whole was very much on the agenda. Uh, a year ago when Finland held the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Uh, my data was on, on the, on the uh, 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 table, but also uh, more widely how we use research data and open data uh, and how, how businesses can share uh, uh, data um, more widely. Uh, and what kind of policies we would need for that to become become reality. And one development out of that um, is the European data strategy uh, that came out uh, in February, February the 19th of last year. Uh, and in that data strategy, uh, my data was recognized as one of those movements that can promise significant benefits to individuals, in areas including health and wellness, finance, environment, access to public and private services, uh, and, and give greater insight and transparency to their personal data. And that's great. Um, right now, uh, very fundamental things are happening uh, um, relating to personal data and relating to data sharing, uh, relating to open data also actually. Uh, there are numerous uh, uh, European policies uh, being be in, in the works. Uh, the most interesting and most timely right now is the Data Governance Act. Uh, some of you may have uh, seen discussions about this leaked uh, version of the draft. Uh, typ typical, uh, typically, these, uh, these documents leak uh, in advance, uh, and I think that the proposal is actually due out uh, on Wednesday of this week. It outlines uh, here, for example, the, the role of these kind of data intermediaries or, or we call them my data operators, um, how, these, uh, how, how the infrastructure functions so we can get this fair uh, uh, personal data 
economy working. And as I said, in, in, in we've had my data in the Finnish government program. And now the data strategy outlines nine different areas, nine different data spaces uh, that the Europe EU Commission wants to be uh, uh, established. Uh, and one of them is the skills data space. Um, and, and here, I think it's written a little bit from uh, from a kind of a labor market uh, point of view. Um, of course, we'd like to see see also considered not not uh, purely the the kind of economic uh, uh, and social uh, aspect from the from the kind of uh, institutional level, uh, but also of course from the point of the individual. So <clears throat> before I get to the skills bit, uh, I just want to say then about uh, my organization very briefly, uh, about My Data Global, who is driving this, uh, this uh, forward. Uh, so we are an international nonprofit headquartered in Finland, uh, with right now about 500 members from over 50 countries uh, and about 100 organizations uh, involved. Um, we uh, uh, work, uh, uh, I mean, it's a very multidisciplinary bunch. You may recognize uh, uh, some of these companies, uh, probably uh, many of them you will not as they more uh, develop the building blocks are not necessarily consumer facing, facing organizations. But you will see, for example, some universities, some research institutes, some standardization bodies and the like within the members. Uh, like OE uh, uh, Global, uh, as the name says, uh, My Data Global, our goal, and even though I've, I've, I've talked a lot about the European policies here, the goal is uh, uh, to be uh, globally local uh, because certainly the issues of personal data uh, are not solved uh, in Finland or in the EU only. Uh, quite on the contrary, many, many interesting things happening uh, 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 in Asia, for example, in Brazil, in India, uh, and, 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 and in Australia and numerous other countries. And of course, now with, uh, with the US presidential elections and the pressure that has been there for some time, it's very interesting to see what happens um, over there as well. Uh, we work in, in these uh, different uh, thematic groups uh, of which uh, um, on the top right, the skills data is, is, is one um, interesting one and one that uh, uh, um, has a lot of energy right now. My apologies, I'm losing my voice just a little bit. <coughs> so I, I see that there were a few, I just see the icon that there has been a few uh, uh, um, messages in the chat. I wonder if there is anything anything for, for me uh, um, right now. I'm just about to head to the what this my data means uh, uh, to the in the context of work and skills. Uh, but I just maybe pause for a second and ask William, is there anything that to be taken note of from uh, from the chat? Yeah, I have I have uh, two questions. Uh, one is uh, you talk a lot about the European context, do you see similar movements and, and, and developments in other countries? Yeah, so, so uh, um, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, right now there's um, many interesting things that have happened in, in Japan. Uh, in Korea, there actually is also very, uh, uh, like policies particularly related to my data and there uh, an agency called Korea Data Agency has a specific uh, unit on, on, on personal data and they call it incidentally my data unit. Uh, in Australia, there has been uh, new legislation regarding personal data and uh, uh, apparently some, some misdirection uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, India, uh, you know, we often talk about Silicon Valley versus Europe versus China, and that's uh, that's a little bit polemic. Uh, um, but of course, understandably, that's that's what we 
talk about I think in India uh, uh, lots of uh, um, interesting policies there there's uh, a bit of a data protectionism uh, there they want the data to stay within within the country but for good purposes for understanding better what's what what kind of economic policies would be would be needed there and then for example uh, in Brazil new data protection laws laws there uh, uh, so certainly, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm describing here uh, a lot of the European efforts, but, uh, but we certainly uh, are not constrained or want to talk about only, uh, only Europe. Okay. And another question uh, from uh, Sean. Um, uh, he writes, I really like the idea of supporting the individual in attaining control over the data trails. I tend to think of this as a supply chain issue for OERs. Since the inception of my data a few years ago, the IT industry has gone through a major shift towards distributed lecture technologies, both fully and partial lectures. How do you see this change impacting your reference architecture? Well, a lot of the organizations uh, uh, I mean, in, in, so so in in two things to that. I mean, first, firstly, uh, technology agnostic uh, in the sense that there are multiple ways to uh, implement uh, this kind of my data thinking. And uh, and by the way, Tim Berners Lee's uh, uh, interrupt uh, and, and solid uh, um, projects, which you may have heard. Uh, very much in line also with uh, 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 with the with the my data principles. Now, a lot of the uh, the organizations that that uh, uh, the logos were shown and the solutions that they create, a lot or some of them are built on distributed ledgers and on, on blockchain technologies. But there is no kind <laughs> uh, uh, of say that it, uh, things must be done with uh, with with blockchain. But for example. Uh, and, and of course, personal data should not be on, on, on blockchain, but uh, but the consent and trails uh, um, could could be and, and and are being utilized. Or the blockchain technologies are being utilized by many many in the in the community. I'm personally not not an expert in the in the distributed ledger uh, technologies. Certainly, uh, will never claim to be. Okay, thank you. No other questions for now. So please continue. Thanks, Willem, for for uh, for those, and thanks uh, for the questions. Uh, um, all right. So then, let's see what uh, what it might look for uh, uh, look like in the future of work and skills. Uh, and this is a relatively new uh, new area for us. Um, so um, very very much uh, eager to hear your hear your thinking. Um, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice just a little bit, so <clears throat> I wonder maybe instead of the slides, I will uh, play this uh, uh, three-minute video uh, um, that explains what is essentially there. <clears throat> no, I just hope that I have the sound sharing. It should be there. The ecosystem. Please stop if you don't hear the sound well. We can hear the sound. My Data Accelerator program presents the future of work and skills, creating a human centric skills data ecosystem. We are on a mission towards a skills data ecosystem which empowers people to achieve their dream job and enjoy lifelong learning opportunities. Unfortunately, in today's work and skills market, data lays fragmented in various systems. Sharing and retrieving your personal data can be time consuming and frankly, frustrating. Not to mention the lack of control and transparency onto how the data may be used. Our goal is to create a human centered approach to information, work and learning. We aspire to change the future of work and skills by helping people to achieve their goals easier, faster and smarter. This begins by putting the individual at the center of their data and combining their work and skills information to create a holistic profile. This includes your professional and educational experiences, skills, certificates, and legal documents. The individual can also define goals, strengths, interests, or preferences. 
To experience this ecosystem firsthand, let's embark on a journey with Matilda. Imagine it's 2025 and Matilda is graduating from university, where she has gained a wide set of skills in the area of business, sustainability, and construction. As she transitions into a job seeker, her profile lets employment agencies know she is open for opportunities. Using her profile, Matilda receives a personalized map with options to reach her goals. She can choose to take the fast track directly to her goal or, if feeling more adventurous, a scenic route, which opens up different experiences and suggestions she didn't consider herself. Her route proactively suggests new opportunities based on her experiences and preferences. She can choose the opportunities she wants to pursue and safely share and update her data. As Matilda learns new skills and reaches career milestones, her profile stays up to date and she can always reevaluate her preferences to set a new course or even take a career break. The concept of this ecosystem experience is to provide a safer, more accessible and better overall work and learning experience for Matilda. It puts her needs at the core to find the most enjoyable way of achieving her goals and dream job. To build this experience for Matilda, we must think about an ecosystem effort rather than independent digital services. We are now calling for partners to join the ecosystem. To find out more, do read out the white paper or extended presentation on this topic and contact skillsdata at mydata.org. A common skills data space can change the future and we would love for you to be a part of it. Together, we can create an experience that makes work and lifelong learning easier and more enjoyable for all. Okay, <clears throat> so that was the uh, the skills data uh, thematic group uh, and their work uh, through the accelerator. Um, and this effort, um, I should say, is uh, uh, not uh, only theoretical, um, but quite on the contrary, there has been some really good um, uh, pilots that have taken place. Um, four different aspects uh, um, of this. Uh, and, and my apologies now for, for having this, uh, these slides in, uh, in, in Finnish here. Um, this Vastu group, uh, um, for example, they, uh, 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 so they have piloted now with dozens of, in, 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 a, in a small, small group still, uh, with dozens of people uh, um, for the creation of this uh, digital CV uh, with the digital CV consisting of uh, verified uh, quality data coming from different types uh, of sources. Uh, in practice, that means that you get things like the driver's license uh, data, uh, your study data uh, and study about extra qualifications, uh, perhaps uh, about your right to uh, handle explosives or uh, uh, serve alcohol and, and such like that, that are coming from uh, different, typically government registries, not necessarily, but often government uh, registries. Uh, and of course, this is not uh, simple. Uh, uh, well, we realize as the legislation, the GDPR does not uh, uh, cover uh, a public sector in the same way. And there are issues regarding uh, the, whether or not people are allowed to even with their consent to utilize and give that data for further. So in, in some way, we're, we're still in an experimentation phase uh, with this. Um, but for example, with the, with the digital CV, um, in the construction industry. Uh, and you can imagine that construction workers uh, creating good looking CVs is not necessarily uh, uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, key, key uh, uh, competence of, of, of individuals. 
there has been an increase, uh, been able to faster uh, get people employed faster uh, and at the same time get, get kind of quality data, get people uh, uh, lessening the burden on, 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 on creating their, their digital CVs. And I think it's quite, quite understandable that, uh, that such, uh, uh, such advances will, will help. Uh, and, and again, if we look at what kind of uh, ecosystem players are needed there, I mean, we're talking about recruitment uh, systems. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, recruitment services, HR services, uh, and, and, and services like, like this. Uh, and my apologies, I, I, I see that I have um, cut, cut wrong slides here. Um, so, th so this is what it looks like uh, here in Finland, uh, the digital employment um, project. Uh, it's a mobile app that people can use where they can control uh, their consent. A slightly similar uh, program is being experimented by the Swedish uh, employment agency, Arbets for Medlingen and, uh, and JobTech. But we're still in, 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 in rather early, early phases. Of course, then there is the issue of like, okay, how do these uh, uh, sorry, that was a that was a wrong slide. So how do we <clears throat> excuse me? So how do we then make this happen? How do we get uh, people uh, looking at these uh, uh, data sources, data using services, how do we get the interchange uh, uh, working? You can imagine that your study records in Finland will look different from the study records in, 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 in another country and, and, and so on. Uh, so that's why we have this skills data uh, thematic group. Uh, and the goal of the, of the thematic group is to unite organizations to build a human-centric skills data space. Uh, so we want to influence that skills data space, that one out of the nine that I mentioned uh, that the EU Commission wants to build, uh, make sure that this type of thinking is embodied into, into the creation of that data space. Uh, and what we would need there uh, is to have uh, education and training providers, uh, different types of learning and guidance uh, related apps and solutions, uh, to have employers, uh, big employers, uh, and, and all kinds of recruitment uh, and HR platforms collaborating uh, to make this happen so that individuals can access, control, share, and keep their skills data up. Uh, um, basically, uh, ideally from one place, you, you are able to update your data in multiple places. Uh, so again, the skills data thematic group, which just has formed now uh, uh, less than a month ago, uh, is building on top of the accelerator uh, that the video you saw uh, um, uh, uh, was made by, the work made by them, uh, and building on the work of, of, of My Data Global and its, its other efforts, and on this, this skills alliance, uh, uh, which is already an existing uh, community of, of, of universities and employers um, in the space. So uniting these into, into one whole. So as I said, uh, uh, my data is there in the European data strategy. The skills data is in the European data strategy. And to make it happen, the commission is also not just talking about it, but will be investing uh, considerable amounts uh, of funding uh, into the space. Uh, and we expect there to be the open calls to implement these uh, uh, data spaces um, sometime early next, next year. So that's why, why we would 
uh, if this, uh, what I've been uh, uh, presenting here uh, is of interest to you, encourage you to join, uh, have a look at the skills data, um, the video, the white paper and the presentation uh, and join us on the My Data Slack, very much an open community. We will continue uh, work on this, uh, of course, during this week. Uh, uh, it will be great if we can, we can engage uh, uh, together. Uh, I also encourage you to join the My Data Online Conference uh, coming up next month, uh, where we talk about not just the skills data, but the different domains uh, related to this, this as well. So just quick, quick plug for, for that. Um, the white papers, the further uh, uh, elaborations on the concept that I've uh, said uh, are available on the MyData.org website. Um, the, the MyData operators white paper is, is, is more about the, the infrastructure pieces needed uh, uh, to, to implement, to make MyData reality. Uh, and this introduction to the human-centric use of personal data is more of a, a high level and basics uh, um, to get started with. And then of course the skills data as a third one. Uh, the My Data Declaration that I mentioned uh, um, at the start, uh, the three shifts uh, and such uh, is available. Uh, I encourage you to look at that uh, in, in, in more detail. And of course, welcome to join the Slack and welcome to join My Data Global as a member. And I think I will park it there. I think we have a, a few minutes for uh, for discussion. I hope this raised up uh, a few few thoughts. <clears throat> so uh, um, over to you, Willem. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, great talk and, and really interesting uh, to hear about uh, my data. I have a question uh, from Sean. Uh, he asked, you discussed a single place of update for operators. Would the permission provided uh, historically grant all future access? If not, how can we control the versioning, the content and related permissions? Do you have any thoughts or examples how this is accomplished in practice? Uh, hold on, let me just, uh, I will maybe pause and actually, yeah. and then I can also see that. Um, so, <clears throat> so if I understand your question, Right, Sean, uh, uh, and, and, and please do, do fill in if you want. Uh, so, so, I mean, if I'm giving uh, access, I mean, typically I'm giving right now access that yes, uh, you know, a, a LinkedIn version 2.0, uh, yes, it can access my, my uh, 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 driver's license data and my university degree data from now, uh, now onwards. Uh, then one day uh, uh, I get annoyed by by LinkedIn. I no longer want to be there. Uh, uh, I, I I revoke that consent. Uh, but in principle, if I'm giving the uh, and and of course the consent can be uh, uh, as we typically have it now. Uh, uh, I won't say typically. Uh, often have from now uh, onwards until something happens. But we can, uh, uh, um, if, if you're talking about the version, I don't know if you're talking about what you mean by versioning here, um, but give consent more kind of one time. Uh, so for example, uh, and, and let me just, uh, just uh, 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 explain how, how the, the simple status data of somebody being a student uh, um, has been used in another, another use case example. So when you uh, want to buy public transport tickets online um, as a student, um, before it has been impossible, uh, uh, for example, in Helsinki, uh, rather you will need to go to the public transport office, show a student card. Yes, I'm a student at the university. Yes, I've got right to this uh, uh, discount. Uh, so instead, um, through this kind of my data operator, uh, into which uh, this this public transport uh, uh, connects, uh, with my consent, as I'm buying uh, my my uh, uh, public transport ticket, with my consent, 
the ticket provider can go on and check uh, from a central registry, uh, in this case, a central registry in, in, in Finland, we have that, uh, um, whether or not I'm a student or not, for that one purpose um, only. Sure, so you're talking about having a resume from 2015. Uh, okay, so you're talking about your, your job's history as, as, as you update the resume uh, and you don't want them to track over, over, over time. Uh, yeah, in, in, in principle, the, the, uh, uh, the my data operators, uh, um, you could have have control uh, um, and, and, and kind of stop sharing of data, uh, revoke that sharing, uh, and then, then revisit, re-give uh, um, that, that data. Of course, implementing those is, is, is not uh, 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 trivial. Uh, and I mean, the, the kind, of, kind of getting your, your up to updated data, uh, I mean, I mean, ideally, that that uh, uh, recruitment company might not even keep a file. Uh, rather, it might ask you um, about your resume when whenever it needs it, kind of on on uh, uh, on demand, uh, so to speak. I'm not sure if I'm if I'm answering your question, Sean. Um, uh, we have, I think, uh, yes, you answered this question. Uh, so, so, uh, um, I, I have a question. Uh, so you talk about my data uh, we are, of course, are involved with open education. So it's all about, uh, sharing. Where do you see the link between those two? Well, I mean, there's lots of linkages. Uh, uh, so I mean, first of all, the kind of, uh, philosophy of, of kind of sharing uh, uh, building on top of uh, um, is quite uh, uh, quite similar. Uh, then I think a lot of the interesting use cases come from uh, combining different types of data. Uh, so one of the things that happened uh, uh, with open data, I think there was a lot of um, uh, even hype on on open data. And one of the beliefs was that okay, on particular data sets, uh, people will build their businesses on it. Um, but a lot of use cases will need uh, open data uh, uh, and they will need some personal data. For example, how do I compare with a sample of the population or with my co-learners or, 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 or whatever? It might need uh, um, my personal data combined with something, something that's uh, uh, aggregate and, and, and that's generic. How do I sleep compared to others uh, in my in my population, or am, am I an active person? Uh, do I get my physical exercise uh, compared to what I should be getting, uh, and and so on? So there's there, there's there's for example these types of uh, uh, combinations which are relevant. And I, and I should say by the way, uh, one thing which I didn't mention, uh, um, we talk about my data. Uh, we don't necessarily mean uh, ownership um, of that data. Uh, data ownership is a, is a, is a tricky concept uh, uh, um, as a whole, uh, but rather uh, control over, over that data, the agency to control over that data and, and, and this data ownership uh, may or may not be part of that package and is certainly discussed, um, but it's, 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 we can have uh, control over our data without the kind of ownership piece of that. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, we're, uh, we came to the end of this session and I have to be very strict with the instructions I have. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for this, uh, this really interesting keynote. And uh, I would like everyone invited to, uh, to continue this discussion uh, on uh, the Connect platform. I shared the link in the chat. So please uh, add your comments there, questions there, and uh, hopefully uh, Timo will uh, also uh, be there and, and answer those. Um, so now there is a 